Welcome back guys to another fun video. Today we're going to be doing a deeper dive into the Lee 225 55 grain cast lead bullet. I've previously posted a range report where I did a very minimal load workup, just testing function, and then I picked three charges above where I found function and then shot some groups. Those weren't stellar, but I picked the best one, and then we took it out to 100 yards after that. So here's the results from our first range report on the three charges we started with. You can see our first two groups are fairly opened, and then here at 20 grains, I've got four almost touching there with this one low flyer down here. And so here I am thinking, wow, we've got us a really killer charge going on here. This could be great. But uh, you guys start mentioning, hey, dummy, um, they're probably not going to shoot that great once you get a little further out. So I said, all right. And Dave Thorzak said, why don't you load up some more of those and test it out at maybe 50 or 100 yards and we can see what it's actually doing. So we did that the next week and here's the results from that. And here's our target from 100 yards. And as you can see, there's six shots all in about two or maybe three inches. But then when you go, hey, let me, let, let's me let see that whole target, buddy. Uh, here's about 20 shots at 100 yards. And that's more of a shotgun pattern than uh, a grouping, you could say. And so as you can see, we're not headed in the right direction with this 20 grain charge. And as I've previously found when doing some load workups for the 300 blackout with some cast loads uh, faster is not always better so I had to back it down on that and start moving slower and my groups actually started tightening up and that's exactly what you guys were saying in the comments here we've got James Pollard saying everyone has trouble with the 55 grain they tend to run them too soft or too fast or the wrong twist rate he then mentions that he has good luck at 18 grains of H335. So that's two grains lower than I'm going right now. So I think that's what we're going to give a try with. Some other suggestions were using a gas check, which I currently do not have, and also using a harder alloy, which I also do not have. So I'm going to try and reduce my charge, keep the gun functioning, but go as slowly as we can and see if we can get this to group a little better. So if we end up... Not having any luck with the H335 here, I've got a couple other patterns that we can test before trying a new alloy or uh, investing into some gas checks since I'm trying to keep my cost as low as possible. During the last test I had all mixed range brass, but this time I picked 10 matching head stamps that we can test to try and increase our odds as much as possible and reduce as many variables as we can. Along with matching our brass, for the sake of consistency, I'm going to sort out 10 bullets of the exact same weight. Our other components for today, we're going to be using the CCI 450 Small Rifle Magnum Primers. I always write the date when I purchase my components. This was December of 2020, and you can see that was $4.65. Not a bad deal in today's crazy market. And you can see they look just like the 400s, the 500s, and the 550 primers as well. And for anyone who has not seen, here's a quick look at your H335. It's your standard ball powder. Some of them look like some smashed flakes, but they're mostly round. They flow very well through the Uniflow, which I'm going to be using here. And since we're doing a load development sort of scenario, I'm not going to be working on the 550 today. I'll be priming with the Lee Ram Prime over here on the RCBS. We're going to be using our Lee Reloading Dies today. The set is number 90502. My brass does not need full length resized. It's already been 100% prepped and ready to go. I will, however, be expanding my necks because we have a cast bullet. We're going to be expanding our necks with the Lee Universal Case Expanding Die. It comes with these two insert plugs. There's several combinations you can use to match your case height and to get the proper bell diameter. So I weighed out 
and sorted our bullets here. I've got 10 of them that were 56.6 grains. And here's the average on all 10 of them at 566.1. Move the decimal over. We've got 56.6 grains. Pretty consistent here. And the difference is probably just how much powder coat is stuck to each one of them. So to set my uniflow here, I'll do a five throw average. And since my charge is 18 grains, five of those will be 90. I've been lazy and haven't got around to finding a way to mount this to my desk. So I'm still using my awesome Harbor Freight clamps. And here we'll do our five throw average. And as long as you're consistent with your technique, your throws should also be consistent since we're using a ball powder. And so we're reading 90.1 here, which is pretty darn close for five throws. That's less than a tenth over or under for each of those. And now we'll double check that on the RCBS 505 beam scale. And so here we're gonna take our little pan, throw it on the scale. And again, if it's over a tenth or so, that's pretty good for a five throw average. And that looks pretty good to me. And quickly verify that we have powder in all of our cases. We're aiming for 2.10, but that's close enough for today's purposes. And finally, we'll add a medium sort of crimp to it from the Lee factory crimp die. I'll have to pull that off of the 550 tool head real quick. It's pretty subtle, but perhaps you can see the crimp on the left as opposed to the slightly flared mouth on the right. And there you have it, folks. There's our 10 rounds ready to go to the range this weekend. Make sure to stay tuned for more. I will get you with the range update and see how these do. I'm just going to shoot all 10 of them at 100 yards at the same target, and we'll see if we have any improvement with lowering that velocity a little bit. If you made it this far through the video, thanks for hanging in there. I really appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to subscribe if you have not so far. And keep the tips coming in the comments. I appreciate all your feedback from all you guys. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.